And so you had this all made after this was found. Oh yeah, yeah. This mm -hmm. was just an exhibit that we didn't know it was going to be mounted on the wall, and we got our exhibit company to Put it take in. this thing yeah. and mount it. And mount it. Um, yeah. This is beautiful. Yeah, and this is all a new facility we built, uh, finished it up in 2000, around 2009. I was going to ask you how long it's been there. Now explain this part. They're saying that. Grants were also given as rewards for service. What type of service would they have gotten grants for? You know, I, yeah, time? I'm not sure exactly. Um, I should have asked the guy that was researching and writing that what, um, what, what type that of service was. he meant. Yeah. yeah. But I know that a lot of the, the community on Sandy Island were given property by the owners when basically they were kind of abandoned in the rice production. production. And, and Sandy Island residents grew rice into the they 40s. Did, right? They yeah. kept growing rice my and trading it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my yeah. grandfather was still growing yeah. in the 40s on St. Helens. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so now these and these are interesting names, Paulie, like mm -hmm. Paulie Violin, uh, yeah. Brown is a common Gullah Geechee last name, Alston is. Uh -huh. I saw another one, uh, where is it? Okay, Abercrombie I haven't seen in a while. Manigold, of yeah. course, uh, yeah. sweet grass baskets. There's, uh, and I see the Alston is spelled differently here. Uh -huh. A lot of times we have just the one L. I've seen that with the one L. Yeah, seen... and then let me yeah. see, I saw another one. Frames like mm -hmm. big, the big frames. I'm wondering yeah. if that's his family now. Yeah. And I see that Boone. Is this from the Boone Hall folks? I Thomas would be Boone. surprised. I though. wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. Then Greer, mm -hmm. I have, like Pam Greer's last name. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that in a while. Baxter, I've seen some. Lucas's, I've seen some. The same. Oh, I met some people mm -hmm. with that last name. Yeah, interesting roll call. And Daniel, I'm wondering if this Daniel connected to Daniel I'm on John Daniel. I don't know. That's a good question. How we developed this exhibit hall to kind of match match what we're we'll getting ready to do this. by boat. Okay. We got 10 so minutes on the that. idea um, of our exhibit theme was that we wanted to have two different separate river systems and we wanted to kind of capture habitats and things that that students and visitors would see on the Waccamaw River, which is, an, is a black water system that runs up to North Carolina. Right. And then the PD, which is an alluvial river. And both of them merge at Sandy Island, and, and a lot of the dynamics of these rivers have created this incredible island that we'll get to go see. So now explain and, uh, what's the difference between those two types of rivers. Well, the alluvial goes all the way up to Tennessee, and so it, a lot of people refer to these rivers as a red river mm -hmm. system because okay. when it rains, we get a lot of okay. sedimentation. Yeah. Right. And so when that comes down, and I'll show you in person on the river, but all that sedimentation filters out into these mm -hmm. wetlands and it raises the, the elevation of your marshes so that oh. you have different types of forest mm -hmm. than you would have on this black water system. All of that combined creates this incredible delta, which was eventually, you know, farmed for rice and, and made this area one of the wealthiest areas in the world at one time. Um, Sandy Island was a big part of it, and um, the, just the geology of this whole landscape will blow your mind while we're going on the river. You'll see things that just are incredible view sheds, but they also are these big high sand ridges and 
things that were created back when the ocean was higher and a lot of this was the mouth of a, a river system coming into the ocean. Wow. So, um, you know, one of the themes that we do a lot with schools mm -hmm. is this area, the Grand Strand, is incredibly developed. It's a yes. recreation, I mean, it's a, a, a tourism industry yeah. that's that's um, massive. Massive. Mm -hmm. This area, the, the, the western side, is rural farmland. Mm -hmm. And, and you never know they're traveling up 17. And then even on the river, when you come <laughs> yeah. down the river, this refuge buffers the river from what is on the other side. If you're in this area over here, you'd think you're, you know, the traffic's unbelievable, the population density is really high. Mm -hmm. As soon as you get over on this side, it's farmland, it's, it's open space. Right. And, and a lot of people would view this river as an obstruction to growth. Um, there's oh, been yeah. plans forever, including a bridge that was supposed to go across yep. Sandy yeah, Island. Mm -hmm. And it would open all this up to, res to uh, the tourism industry. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to convince people that this refuge is not a barrier. No, um, it's not. It has created an island that has protected the, the community on Sandy Island as well as a lot of habitat. Absolutely. But so um, it's not a bad thing. No, and, and that's a great thing. Yeah. That's a necessary thing. Right. And yeah. But the challenge is that the residents have to commute by boat well, because there's not a bridge, there's right. not a transportation system. Mm -hmm. And, and we're working with the community and, and partners on trying to figure all that out. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, the thing that I hope to do, and I was really, really um, blessed, Ray asked me to participate recently in the Over Horizon mm -hmm. um, school program, and yeah, I, it, made me, it made me think about yeah. how can I get Browns Ferry or Carver's Bay or a lot of these schools to connect with the schools over here. Right. One of the things we did with a school group um, is walk them all. I hate to use this term, but these kids have never, they're very privileged in the respect that they, they are in a really nice school district and a nice mm -hmm. school system, but they've never seen anything outside. outside. And a lot of the residents right. of Sandy Island work at that school. Wow. So years ago, we got permission to take the school boat over, oh, over. Mm -hmm. and um, and the kids got it. The kids loved it. There was at least two people that lived on the island that were in the class that were kind of turned into my tour guides. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the, the weirdest thing was when the teachers went across in the boat and they realized what the residents have to do every, every day. day. And one of them said, she said, I always used to not understand when these kids showed up late right. and they said the tide was low and they're like, What's that, that got to do with it? anything? Yeah. And after she did the trip over, she said, well, I get it now. They really do have yeah. tide issues. They have to right. use this canal or the school boat. Yeah, so it's, right. a, it's a way of life that a lot of people don't understand. Don't understand. Right. The residents are very private and they don't want to be treated exactly. differently. They have a very tight community. Right. and. Um, and I need to hurry along because they're over here waiting. Wait Hopefully we can, now. But, um, but, but see, my but, family lives on an island. My father's mm -hmm. side of the family, which was Palo Alto Island, which mm -hmm. is the next door to St. Helena, the same way yeah. Uh, yeah. So when my father and my aunts and those went to Penn School, mm -hmm. which is Penn Center yeah. now, they had to come across the causeway or yeah. come by the boat around the back. Bye -bye. And so that's what my mother and those always remember that they, when they would do roll call, sometimes yeah. the good ones weren't there. Yeah. And they were like, well, where are they? They're like, the tide is hot. Yeah. You know, or oh, the tide is too low or whatever. And then they would understand. But yeah. see, the teachers would go and get you. So yeah, well, and they that's... would roll call. <laughs> so then they understood yeah. what it meant. But I understand what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. It's a good thing to help with that cultural uh, education for right. those teachers. Now they get it when the exactly. student says that. Yeah. We were thinking we were going to show the kids all this stuff and the kids they got they were, right they, got, they were more interested in seeing where their classmates grandmother lived right. and stuff, stuff like, like that. that they didn't care about the you all know the rest of that. all the other details <laughs> but, but, but your uh, work wasn't in vain because you educate yeah. the teachers oh, yeah. they educate the educator i'm always for that one of the things I was gonna was ask cool we this. did with the floor i actually Different saw this floor, floor in a yeah. store in myrtle beach uh -huh. and so we got the company to, to do so we, we put the, the lighter color for the PD, for the PD. which is the red, red river, river, and then we did the and black, the black drain for the, uh, um, the black water system. For the walk yeah.
for how Hunter tell him to do this year, the Queen Quint, Chief just said the Gullah Geechee Nation. So glad that Hunter to tune in one more again to Gullah Geechee TV and thing like that. This going to be my day, Pun, when you be. We going out showing it to Sandy Island. We're planning we people a day and thing like that. You might done read about them, you might get about them. We've been a try for put one bridge years and years ago and thing like that from the strand. But we in the let that going on. So we still got we people over here who live over there. You might have read about them when some of them drowned it. We going out across the same river down creek and thing that half across every day to get back to the main one. So Hunter Chillin going to get to Yeti a little bit more of what going on down here because you know when Hunter the day with me, Hunter going to know this year the what going on. Give y'all a quick orientation here. We're we're right here on this bluff, and okay. what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through down, um, back up the PD into Bull Creek. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be a little bit of a drive, but we're going down Bull Creek, okay. and we're gonna come out into the Waccamaw, mm -hmm. and we'll come down, and the community is here. So, oh, okay. so we're going it's about a right. thirty minute drive. I'm gonna go a little bit quick to no get fun. through there. So um, this we're going between Bulls Island and Sandy Island. Yep, we're gonna go down between Bull Island and Richardson Pasture and then come by Sandy Island mm -hmm. and then come down to Waccamaw okay. down to the residential And we'll be community. passing the strand by on the other uh, side. Oh yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. And you won't know except a few spots where you'll see residential growth right out by the, this is an old map too, right a to lot the of this marsh. stuff has changed. Mm -hmm. okay. But um, but you can see Sandy Island. Right. I'll keep this with us. I'm bringing too much stuff. I have to be responsible for my stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Going by boat, remember Gilligan's Island. You got food. You got food, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wasn't sure because my last outing, you know, we ate lunch over there. Yeah, that's right. We did boots and there were, there were wild boars that had their little <laughs> hooves, dogs, oh, that were, yeah, they were all for Right here, went across the river and up, there's an old road that goes up through there. Um, there's a couple of cabins up at the top of that that were, they're just the rubble of them now, but they were the caretaker for the, um, the ferry. Um, Coastal Carolina University which did a recent field school dig up there and they um, found some pretty cool stuff, really? including some old dolls and things that were part of the, you know, community that, that lived there. This is Bull Island right here on the right. right. Mm -hmm. I was wondering at first if that was a stranded boat for some miles. Is that he's fishing or what he doing? Yeah, he's mm -hmm. fishing. So you have a lot of people still come out around yeah, and fish? Yeah, what they, are they catching? Mostly flatfish or brim, um, bluegill, red breast. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a good catfish population. Oh, oh okay, yeah. Catfish mm -hmm. population up here. Oh, wait till I tell Rick it right this. Uh-huh. Gully Geechee Fishing Association members, did y'all just hear that? <laughs> we found where the catfish is. <laughs> we gotta get catfish. Mm -hmm.
Do you have an alligator population out here? Yeah, we've got a pretty good alligator population, but they, you know, opened a season in South Carolina a couple years back, and a lot of them are really good. And do you have an alligator population out here? Yeah, we've got a pretty good alligator population, but they, you know, opened a season in South Carolina a couple years back, and a lot of them are really good. still allow shad fishing in these rivers with gill nets. Yeah. And so, There's a number of folks on Sandy Island that use yeah, drift nets, and oh, okay. they go out and row and drag, lift the yeah, other net and drift and catch that. Right. Because the Beaufort County, they don't want us to use them anymore. Yeah, yeah, going on here? All right, this is, this is, um, it's called Richardson Pasture. It's a property that's owned by Grand Strand Water and Sewer. Oh. And, um, got longleaf pine on the ridge there. Um, they clear cut the majority of that property, um, because they want to use the property for sewer treatment. And they're planting, they've experimented with planting a lot of different tree species. They've had a lot of problems, and we're trying to get them to plant it back in Longleaf. Okay. Um, it's so close to Sandy Island, and there are red cockaded woodpeckers on this block right here. That's the only reason that they left trees standing, standing on this bluff. Hmm. Um, one of the coolest things, when we had our dedication for our visitor center, um, I had a couple hours to kill the afternoon before, and, and our regional director, Cindy Doner, was here. And uh, she was riding with me. We were coming through here, and we were just talking. And it was about this time in the afternoon, and there was a deer that had just swam the river, and it ran up that sand ridge and jumped over the hill. And I was like, I was like, that's about as close to what probably the first, you know, person paddling this river, this creek here ever saw. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> See a deer swimming the river, climbing that sand ridge. But uh, right up here ahead is an intake for all of the drinking water for the Grand Strand. Oh, really? So when I give these talks to civic groups and I can tell if people are real interested in alligators right. and bears oh, right. and stuff yeah. or mm -hmm. if they're not. Right. But I always tell them, you know, that the lifeblood for this Grand Strand community is the drinking water available. Right. And right. alluvial river, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the red rivers, they're easier to clean cheaper clean for drinking water than the black water system. Why is that? Because it doesn't have all the tannins and stuff and that they have okay, to filter out. You know? right. And the water quality is a little bit better. Little better. And so that's why they put this intake on, the, on this particular yeah. part. So okay. Grand Strand Water and Sewer is the largest landowner in our acquisition boundary and we keep trying to find ways Please, to work to with work them. With but them. bottom line is you know the refuge is protecting their water supply for the yeah. whole Grand Strand and so yeah. if none of the other things matter, that the water does. does. That yeah. does. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to make those connections because a lot of do. people don't care yeah. about some of the things that, yeah. that we care about. You know? so, right up here, they, they had clear cut right down to the edge of this uh, Bull Creek and they replanted it back in Longleaf uh, okay. just on this ridge. So, I made a long leaf out of that side I was talking to y'all about it. I know long leaf will grow. Is that what it is? How long has this business center been here? What's that? How long have you had the business center? Uh, yeah, we opened officially in 2000. 2009. Okay, yeah. so it's not that old, five years. Yeah. So how's it turn out? Have people really been coming out? Yeah, yeah. We, we had an opportunity to build it over by Pauly's Island. Right. But I really felt like that the school districts on this side don't have access to Brook Green and Huntington right. Beach and stuff like that. Right, they need So to. we built it where we did to get to the schools. 
right. but we don't have the, the beach traffic that we would have had over there. there. But right. I, to me, that's that's know, a secondary thing. I mean, yeah. I'm looking at quality over quantity. So our school group is really strong. They're really strong. Yeah. That's great. We got about 35. that bridge. Got 
it got killed in November a couple of years ago in a real cold, kind of like we're getting this weekend. It was, um, somebody was giving it water, which I, I mean, it had water in the Freshwater River, but it was hanging out up around a marina and it got killed by the cold. Craig, didn't you have a seal one? Yeah, we had a harbor seal. Oh. I don't know where that came from. I don't know where that was from. I've been accused of putting it out there, but I swear I didn't. So the manatee was the largest creature you've had out there? What's that? The manatee is the largest creature you've yeah, had out there. Yeah. Okay. Mm. What about sharks? What, what's real common are um, Atlantic sturgeon. Oh, really? We, really? we have yeah. those in the river. You, this time of year, it's not uncommon to see them jumping. How the shark population up here? How big? Sharks. Uh, sh you know, sharks, I mean, I like sharks. I mean, Atlantic sturgeon. Yeah, we we do have sharks down on the lower yeah. end. Uh huh. Oh, bull, bull sharks. Uh huh. We were talking, and he was telling me that he and his wife came up for the wooden boat show, and he had a, a boat they were staying on, and so he came up to walk them all. He didn't know that this was a refuge, and he said he started coming up the river. And he just saw. You know, all this kind of green space and he said I saw the refuge signs and he's like I just was like I can't believe all this is being protected but you know he's like I said well it's not old growth like it was you know three four hundred years ago but it still has that kind of look like it did three or four hundred years ago mm -hmm. the trees aren't as big and he's like I just seeing the blue goose sign and knowing you know it was protected was yeah, good no, that's no, right no, no. <laughs> Wonderful friend of the refuge. Yeah. Right. How much land is in this refuge? Right now we're just under 30,000 acres that 30, we're managing. Um, it's not all owned by the Fish and Wildlife Service, but um, we've got somewhere in the neighborhood about 13,000 that we own. Okay. This so is the rest of it like an easement? Yeah, uh, a lot of it. The next big chunk is about 8,000 zoned by the state, and we manage it for them. Okay. And then some of Sandy Island we lease. Uh, we're actually looking at doing an easement with them now. We were leasing and doing an easement now. That's not good. We're ready to get a big chunk of that. Yeah. But the difference what we saw on the PD, you, there was a lot more fall colors. I mean, you yeah. can see it on the yeah. end. Yeah. But most of this Blackwater River Cypress Tupelo, it stays mm. wetter. It uh -huh. doesn't have the sediment to build up the banks and build oh, the elevation. Okay. So it's so a different. That's why it looks yeah. almost like swampy and low yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. It's a real deep river, so right. there was a lot of commerce. There were ship builders up in Bucksport that built ships. That oh, were yeah. Down and, yeah. So now, would this be considered maritime forest still? Uh, or what would this be yeah, classified? Yeah, the islands are. The islands are. Yeah. yeah. Most of this, I mean, this is tidal water. Right. And it's really, it seems common to me because I grew up here, but it's really a unique environment. It's tidal fresh water forested wetland. Okay. Okay. When we get downstream, uh -huh. you'll see where the rice fields were, which they started out just like this. Right. And they cut all the trees down, and, and they built the levees, and they built, dug ditches, and they drained, drained right. the water out of there. Uh -huh. yeah. And I was told, and I don't know how they calculate all that, but it was more dirt moved by humans building these rice fields in Georgetown than the pier building. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A lot of dirt. Mm. Yeah. Fast. Up here on the left, all this refuge, but oh, up here on the left is um, a Grand Strand water and sewer oh, outfall. They, they, they release tertiary treated wastewater into the river, and it's kind of controversial because, uh -huh. you know, it's supposed to be treated, but. You know, oh, yeah. who knows how treated it is. Right. Myrtle, Myrtle, Beach, Air, uh, Myrtle Beach Airport, right? I was going to ask that. 
you never know we're riding by Myrtle Beach if you're on the river. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was a plane right there. Right yeah, but it's one of our research sites for the saltwater intrusion modeling that we're doing. Oh, okay. So this is far enough up that we have not had any saltwater impact. So oh, this is mm -hmm. kind of our control or the one that we know right. is still pristine. Still. And, so now, uh, this body of water and the other one we travel on in the PD, what are they all? Are they all fresh water, salt they're, water? They're all fresh they're all water, fresh but water. when they meet on the lower end, yeah. they become Winyah Bay, and right. in recent years with drought, we've had salt water that's come and up that real high. Into it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's caused a lot of trees to die. die We're working right it. now on some research to start right. tracking that tracking kind of trend that. because some of the models that we're looking at are saying that even around Sandy Island, a lot of that could die from salt really? water. Really? Oh. Mm. Wow. So how many and, and, and Georgetown County, yeah. they get their drinking water right beside Sandy Island. Oh, okay. And there's been so much salt water that, that they've had to shut that intake down really? um, on that. Wow. Yeah. Because now, how many different freshwater inlets are there up here? In Georgetown County, how many different? Well, there's fresh five water? rivers that come five into Winyah Bay, and they're all fresh. They're all fresh. And they're all fresh. Mm -hmm. So now and, take and, it to Atlantic up here is where your salt yeah, is. Yeah, and <laughs> the PD, there's dams on the PD, but they're in North Carolina, pretty far up. Okay. So it's one of the longest undammed stretches of river oh, on the east coast, um, really? and combined with the Black River and Waccamaw and the sand pit, there's a lot of fresh water flow coming out, you know, in Winyah during normal years. During drought years, obviously, it changes. Sorry, it, it can... Well, we never want our river dammed in any way. No, you no, no. So we've got to, we've got to, and, yeah. and I, that's another talking point that I've used a lot with communities down here. When we established refuge on the lower end of the river system, it gave us a voice and a vote on these dams that are upstream because we got to make sure we get flows that, that preserve our drinking water and protect our habitats and our way of life, you know. So, um, anyway, not far, just when we get that, see that high sand ridge there, that's Brook Green Garden. That's the start of Brook Green. Well, I did my group, the Color Connection. We did the music for the rights 
over them. Yeah. Yeah. That's my first time seeing it from this side. Yeah. yeah. I've been on the other side. <laughs> yeah. Recently, um, the Coast Guard and DNR finally put no wake zone. Yeah. Um, because yeah. these these boats that are going to Florida come by here and they throw a huge wave, wave. and it just smashes the boats. Mm -hmm. um, population here at Sandy Island? Well, I always considered 130 residents, um, but that was stuff I've heard. But recently I was with a group that we were kind of trying to brainstorm on how to get better transportation over here. Right. And um, the residents said there were more like about 55, I think, of permanent, permanent residents. residents. Uh -huh. You want me to go around the back? On the end? I don't have a... Is, is that where the school boat goes? Okay. If you can get a hat, you can park this. <laughs> I told him, I said, if you can get a hat, you can park this. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, that ain't where the school boat goes. Right okay. I don't want to. I think that school boat be coming back here. Uh -oh. oh, okay. Yeah, and they're looking like what is this? Hey. They're not gonna want their parking space taken. Yeah, they're getting out of there. Little kids getting ready to get out of there. So how much of the island is part of the work you all do and how much do the residents there's have? There's about 9,000 acres that are protected for conservation okay. and then there's, I'm going to ask Furman, I think there's about maybe um, probably about 250, 300 acres, I think. Of That's residential. Residential. I'm good. I just got the wind and the tide kind of mm -hmm. fighting against. Fighting, yeah. It's an everyday reality for mm -hmm. folks that have to come. Right, yeah, it's all right. Now doing that New York park. Get it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Well. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Probably some deer came out here. Or... If you want to be entertained, you come down here in August when they have the annual uh, reunion. When is mm -hmm. it? Uh, the 8th, I think. Oh, okay. They have mm -hmm. it over here. I'm telling you. They had it this year? They, they have it this coming year. The one coming up. Mm hmm. Yep. Oh, okay. okay. Because then we can make that right after our festival. Yeah. 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 You 
Good afternoon, how are you? I'm well. I'm Kwame, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bueller? Mm-hmm. Bueller? Yeah. Craig Craig, glad to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Oh this your store? Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 What's your name? Furman. 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 All right. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Furman. Furman, Furman sounds sound like a party guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He told us all about it. How you doing, Furman? Kwame. Furman Long. How you doing? Good to meet you, Furman. Yeah, this is a little pie gentleman store. We have a buggy over here on the island. I work with the Nature Conservative. I manage the island. Okay. Oh, we have yeah. a, a buggy that'll hold like 20 people, people to pull around. We came over here for the family reunion and they yeah, tow around on the buggy. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. So how long has the store been? It's, um, we opened it up in 1986. Okay. But when Hugo came, it was up there in our yard. Whoa, yeah. just that part, part there. Stay. It blew it off the foundation, and my husband rolled this part down on some of the light poles. Yeah. And then he added this portion and the porch and the other little Oh, so it got expanded after yeah. the store. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. It blew off the foundation. Oh, it was just yeah. this little part right here. Wow. And it was like a little um, convenient one-stop shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which is necessary. Mm-hmm. And then when my son started his um, tour business in 2005, mm-hmm. he just suggested that I um, turn this portion into a bit, um, little gift oh, shop. Gift shop. So mm-hmm. the tours and have some places yeah. to stop me and look around. Because mm-hmm. I'm thinking that I bought this one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have and Furman been telling me. Since my hat got soaked, I'm about to buy me one right now. That black hat right there. Can you pull that black hat out right there? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that'll take care of that real quick. <laughs> Any of his other work? Uh, we have the postcards. He had the watercolor postcards here. One that I have left of Desert um, Lives. And the church. Oh, okay. Let's go. So Playing safe. Like, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then that's the actual picture. Yeah, that's the Oh, the mm-hmm. church. Right. Okay, so, so I'd like to get this. We just turned those on out. Um, okay. The I'd like postcards. to get these. This uh, one too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
He is. is Mr. Sandy Allen. He is. Yeah, I heard you say so. <laughs> can't do anything over here to check with him. Check over check okay. with him. So you the male now? No, no. You the male. No. <laughs> you don't want that title? He's the biggest. No, no, no. no. Oh, he's just the biggest <laughs> in the front. <laughs> but I, I do, I does a lot of work trying to um, try to improve the community. That's right. Right after I retired from the military, that's what was mine. They give me that that that, that, that job. job. Yeah, yeah so. they say you just come home and sit down. We no, need you to no. do some work. I can't sit down. I understand that. So you're the EMS first. Right. Fire department. Yeah, Is fire. that what you did in the military? No, no. Oh, okay. After I left the military, they were looking for someone to to um, to be the um, the lead person over here. We had a person over here, but the chief. Uh, Buxton, Chief Beat, okay. they approached me. And, oh. uh, you know, hard to turn it down. down. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can work right at home. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. So that means 911 number over here ringing your house? Yeah, well, I have radio and everything. Okay. You no, know, the 911 don't ring the no, Go to dispatch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <coughs> yeah. Go, to di go to dispatch, dispatch and, and then dispatch uh, contact, contact me on the radio. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. And then you go, go around. We're going to show them around the island a little yeah. bit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're glad to meet you. Mm -hmm. okay. This won't be the last time I was already invited to the reunion. Okay. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Give this man here. All I can tell you is transportation. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. If, if it's at ten, don't come before ten. They're working yeah. at that. Oh. oh. All right. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. Okay. That's what I'm working on. About two hundred acres. Oh, two hundred. Uh -huh. Okay. Some of that's marsh. Probably a hundred. Oh, that's hundred acres livable. of land. Okay. Mm -hmm. They got two villages, one right here on the water, and we're going to go to the other one about oh, two ahead. miles away. Oh, okay. All right. The one is about two miles away. It's just about to play out. Really? Yeah. Because the people are gone? Gone. Just well, a little too much trouble to, you know, drive from two there, miles up there up here and back. Yeah, so that's pretty okay. aggravating. They're aggravating enough right here. You right know? here, yeah. Because yeah. I was going to ask you when the school children get off. Yeah, and they don't live over here the two miles away in the so right. somebody it's, had to pick them up. It's tough. This is their fire house. They have a fire truck oh, over this is here. The fire house. And this is strictly a volunteer fire, fire department. department. Mm -hmm. Like 70 people live over here. Okay, total. Yeah. We were able to partner with this fire department and get some equipment and stuff so that for the in the case of fires on the refuge or TNC stuff ever got out that mm -hmm. they could help us mm -hmm. some rural fire, firefighting. Okay. Oh, and this is Wilma's Cottage. That was just getting the information about. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is pretty much Main Street. <laughs> this is Main Street, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, all the houses have electricity and water. They do now. They hadn't had water until about, oh, seven, eight years, about ten years ago. They just got water. Just got water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got electricity in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Did they have yeah, to haul water that. from the mainland then? Or? They used to have little old shallow pumps. This house is Reverend Weathers. He's a preacher over here. He's kind of the spokesperson for the island. Okay. He doesn't preach over here. He preaches on the mainland. They have another oh, that's preacher interesting. preach over here. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, and this is the cultural center. This is the cultural center. Well, just for their school. Everybody over here went to school over here up to about the 70s. Oh, okay. All, all grades were in that. Well, in there. Can mm -hmm. you stop for me to get a quick picture? Projects that the Nature Conservancy originated, then a lot of people got together and helped and get help. in the dock. And okay. But now you say the building you say on be owned by Brook Green? It still is. It still is yeah, owned by let, Brook they, Green. They let them use it. Oh, okay. Brook Green they maintain house. it. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. They do, the local people. Now this this looks really sandy over here. I mean sandy on a little yeah, rolling. So did they grow any food? They, yeah, they do a little bit. Okay. Just, you know, very small, small. Just little plots. Small, small. Okay. Yeah, All right. But apparently they know what they're doing. So it, I, yeah. I couldn't grow anything. But there. it lives up to the name. They know what they're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The island is 12,000 acres total. Total. Like seven miles long and four miles wide. Wide, okay. Yeah. Yeah, small compared to where. Nature Conservancy owns 9,160 acres of it. Brook Green owns like roughly 2,000 acres. Ah, okay. 
I wondered where the rest came in. I'm a mathematician, and when my buddy back there gave me those numbers early, I was saying, okay, it still doesn't add up yet. Yeah. All right, now, because the Brook Green part. Main Street really turns to the left. We're going to come back that come way. Come back we'll that through way. some woods now just to show you some of our woodlands over Okay. And so that's the Brook Green Gardens woods that we're going through. Okay. You can notice everything beautiful longleaf pond. Fine, yeah. yeah. Really, really, really pretty in here. But now Brook Green Gardens had this for what reason? I mean... Uh, it was part of the plantation back in right. uh, earlier. That's what I thought. Yeah. So what was Hunt over Huntington here? Huntington bought it. Well, it was rice plantation, but it, Huntington bought it after the rice cultivation. After the rice cultivation yeah, they stopped. With, they liked the statue gardens and all yes, that. Yes, and all that. All this went with that. Okay. That? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Furman, on the island, where did the rice, where was the rice grown on the island? All in on the edge. The edge is, it's like 3,500 acres of highland right down the middle, if you mm -hmm. visualize it. I meant to bring a bath. And each side had like 3,000 acres in it. Mm -hmm. And all on the sides were where the rice was. Oh, and okay. Eight uh, rice plantations actually on the island. Eight? Mm-hmm. We passed a little bit of it. We'll get by a lot of it on the way out of here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So are those areas the wetlands now? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very nice wetlands, too. They really, it's got a lot of vegetation in it. really filters the rivers great. Mm -hmm. Now, most of Myrtle Beach's water comes in on the north end of this island. Okay. All the rice fields for, for the island, basically, the, the Brook Green empty and so you You think about the island being flat because it's in the low country. Because, but right, it's really, but it's really not. Hilly. Yeah, I noticed so, that. That is the highest elevation in Georgetown County. Oh, it is. 78 right. feet above sea I was going to ask you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 78 feet above sea level. Wow, I didn't even know we had elevations like that around here. See that white band on the tree over here? That's the endangered species, the red cockaded woodpecker. Okay. Uh, we have 43 colonies of them over here, which is a lot. Well, I was going to say that seems like a huge amount. Unusually lot. Yeah. One place to have. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, doing really well. Do you have any deer, Skip? Yeah, what? Well, deer. A lot of birds. Bear, we got bears over here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bobcats. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we got coyotes over here now, which is a non-native. Yeah, species. he said they migrated on. Really showing up, big numbers. Oh, in big numbers now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're kind of mm -hmm. getting concerned about it a little bit. <laughs> really. Berman, talk a little bit about the fire history. As you know it, yeah. Sandy Island, when the Nature Conservancy got the island 16 years ago, mm -hmm. we could document that it hadn't been burned in almost 100 years. Really? Mm. So if you look out there, you can imagine what a wildfire would do out there. It, it just hadn't gone. been burned right here in 100 mm -hmm. years. Really? It's like 18 tons of fuel to the acre right there, which is unheard of. Wow. Francis Marion and places like that probably got yeah, they, three tons so to the acre. Right, just instead of 18. Example. Wow. A wildfire would just be, would just yeah. be devastating. Out, it's just sponges. It's almost yeah. hard to walk. Mm -hmm. It's so spongy. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we, we had a... The burning, it would get so hot, you know, we yeah. had a problem. What we'd do, we'd wait a little... Two days after a rain, where the bottom part was oh, wet, then you the top part, part. And then wait a little while, then burn a little bit more. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. we burn like fifteen hundred acres a year now. We really? get the fuel down where it's safe. Okay. Oh, okay. But a wildfire, yeah. if it started one yeah, end of the island no. with that, you yeah. couldn't yeah. you couldn't possibly stop. Couldn't do anything. Mm. Yeah. So we. Mm. So how much is TNZ trying to burn in here? I'm sorry, the bush was hitting. I couldn't hear you. That's right. How much is TNC trying to burn? Fifteen hundred acres 1500 a year. Is what we like to yeah. burn now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are they able to do that then? Yeah. Pretty successfully. Yep. Yeah. And that'd be enough to maintain just. We 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 pick our day real carefully. Right. We, we used to burn like fifty acres a day. Right. And it would take about the same amount of people <clears throat> and the same amount of energy to, to burn it fifty as it was fifteen hundred. So you might as well do fifteen. You know, it's just a matter. Of, have time. to get it all done at one time. time. So mm -hmm. we pick a day where we can burn at night. Oh, and okay. have a good smoke dispersion. I see. Okay. And, uh, so the rain, rain, the rain, and then the nightfall, and yeah. everything used to work together. Interesting. So now, is there, is there any edible vegetation out here? No. Nothing. Okay. A lot of edible wild game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing <sure> that. <laughs> I'm sure of that. So have 
the birds been banded or the population been looked at for the It has. We in fact we banded some uh, last summer and uh, we're talking about banding some more this year if we can get the funding for it, which mm -hmm. I think we are. Mm -hmm. But we did it originally banded like 15 years ago. But it's been so long now, you know, it's useless now, but we didn't follow up on it after after we banded those too much. Mm -hmm. But we did find one up at North Myrtle Beach, about 20 miles from here that was banded, mm -hmm. and found another one at uh, Baruch's that was banded, and I think one at Brook Green that was banded over here. Mm -hmm. So are you regularly checking those cavities for their activity? Well, we yeah. went from, uh, we had like 34 colonists for a long time. We redid it last year for the first time in a long time. Had a professional come over and count them, and now we've got 43, which is. Now who, who was the professional? Uh, they're from North Carolina, I think. Of who was it, Craig? Do you remember Craig the name? Yeah, I'll yeah, give you uh, batteries. I can't even remember the name off it, but it, I was most impressed of anybody I've ever seen work with them. They were really good. Well, you'll think about it. Let me know. There you go, yeah, Paul. I'm, I'm very impressed with that number. You got batteries? Yeah. Oh, in the back. No, I, they are in the back, but I have some here. The fire program is really kind of reshaping a lot of those communities, um, both vegetation and the birds. Uh -huh. um, so a lot of birds are determined finds new cavity trees basically every month. We want to burn some this this year up around that village because we're really worried about that, you know, with that sure. much fuel. Oh, I right could imagine. Sure. Yeah. Uh, particularly around that church. If something happened there. Mm -hmm. and this oh, is God. where the Pyatts were. This is their home oh, right place here. right here. This is the upper village. Okay. And that's where the Pyatt family. family came from. Okay. Mm -hmm. This was the upper village. They used to come in from Brook Green Gardens on. I was just going to ask yeah, that. Yeah, and, uh, What's the age of so, that? This is uh, Anna Village up here is what they call Yeah, so how long has it been here? Since uh, when? This has been here since the 1700s. 1700s. Yeah, but now it's so far from the other end, they, these people are about, yeah. about folded ship. Mm -hmm. mm. Farmer, how many people do you have on your fire crew? Uh, we we'll have around six. Tom Dooley leads the crew? And He's, Tom is, you know, in charge. And, uh, we just hired a new fire crew from this year. They can usually come from all over the country. A lot of them are smoke jumpers, you know, don't have anything to do that time of year. Yeah. So we have some really good crew. I have complete mm -hmm. confidence in them. So now these houses all look abandoned already. Pretty much. There's one of and them, there's two of them really. That folks are still living in. The rest of them are pretty much. So do they go off to Georgetown primarily yeah. Yeah. to live? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Berman, have you seen those telephone poles that the bear's been clawing? Okay. Yeah, please show me. <laughs> we were talking about that. Don't go out of way with If we spot yeah. one. Okay. A bear is so secretive, though, between these two villages, it's That's a big bay, turkey. and mm -hmm. bears live in it every day and come out every night. They've never seen oh. one. They oh, why are you kidding? When I told them there were bears over here, they, they didn't believe even, you. They didn't believe me. The, um, and this is the area that we burned last year. This this area right here is Brook Green Garden. Oh, okay. So we burned this last year. Yeah. And this was our fire line, this road. Right here, the road, okay. Yeah, we burned a little bit to the right up here, too. Okay. And now, this hadn't been burned in a hundred years, but see what a good burn we got in it? We didn't even hardly hurt it. Now, say that again. It hadn't been burned in almost a hundred years. It had 16, 18 tons of fuel to the acre. Mm -hmm. but look how good, what a good job it did by burning at night. Mm -hmm. Burn a real slow burn when there's a little bit of moisture in yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's more open than I would have thought. Yeah. For yeah. Well, years. now you burn, it's burned, y'all burned it twice now, right, Furman? Uh, yeah, we have burned it yeah. twice. Yeah, Not, two times. I'm, I'm saying it because Furman's here, but the, the nice thing, it's really, really challenging to burn over here because you pretty much have to burn the day after a rain, especially that kind of fuel yeah. load. Right. And you gotta have be very mindful yeah. of the rain, I mean the winds and all that. And so... And higher humidities yeah. at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and th because we had the uh, lease agreements on this, TNC's fire crew can burn it for us rather sure. than uh, ours. Yeah, and so, okay. they have a lot more 
flexibility to be sure. right there at the right time. Yeah, yeah I know what right you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We waste a lot of time waiting on just the right conditions, right. but it pays Windows, off in the long right. run. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. They did a really good job. That is great. But the island looks pretty much like this for seven miles. Long leaf oh, seven okay. Miles. For seven miles. Oh, long leaf pond. Beautiful standard long leaf. Uh -huh. Interesting shit. There's still some old cat face trees here and there that were part of the turpentine industry. Oh, so turpentine it's industry was a big it, part it, of this yeah, island's still, history. Right. It's still mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of the old cat face trees still left over. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was the height of the turpentine industry here? Oh, that was probably the early 1700s, late 1700s, late 1700s, late 1700s okay. early 1800s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right on up to probably pretty close 1900s. I was wondering about yeah. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the folks from Brook Green Garden after. You know, the rice really went out. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, what were they using over here for? Was it for timber. hunting ground? Tim oh, timber. timber. And then there was timber. hunting. And hunting. Been a hunting preserve ever since then. Then, mm -hmm. uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Now, that's one thing about the, the local people there. When I first met them over here, you'd mm -hmm. tell them where something was. They didn't know anything about Sandy Island. Mm -hmm. They'd never been allowed been out over here. Because a private hunting club, right. they wouldn't let anybody oh, out. They'd yeah. charge them a truck pass. Mm. So it was kind of sad. And I took them to show up one of the graveyards one day, and they didn't even know it was there. It wasn't half a mile from their house. Why are you mm. kidding? And he said, uh, look, there's Uncle Joe. Wow. That just blew my mind, you know? Yeah, mm. that's something else. So now, if the folks have been on this island from the 1700s, no bridge or anything. Right. What were their initial industries? I mean, during reconstruction and forward. Well, what what after, were they after doing? After rice tree, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What were they doing? Most of them were working at Brook Green Garden as plasterers. Oh, oh as plasterers. Mm -hmm. Or bricklayers. Yep. Is that right? You see the church, which we'll see in a little while. It's made out of plaster and brick, and yeah. it's real, real dirty. Okay, so that was the primary industry yeah. for the folks over there. So it's kind of similar to the folks who were on Cumberland Island. And they really didn't leave. They just continued to work with for the same people that were there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Greg, were you saying something about an easement here? Did, I, I'm working with Brett Green Gardens to consider doing an easement on this property, um, on the piece that they own. And um, they're, <coughs> they're pretty interested. I, I, copies of easements we've done elsewhere. This is Brook Green Garden's property. Property right now. now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we would do is instead of a, a lease agreement, we would have an easement right. on the property. It's, it's technically, Brook Green is a non-profit organization, right. but they can commercially develop and could harvest trees and all that. And so the director mm -hmm. has been real sensitive about you know, making That's clear. some of your cat face trees out there. See them right there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one right there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're, they're healing up, but they, if you look inside there, you can see the grooves. Um, mm -hmm. But this brook green block is the only, I, I hate to say unprotected because it is, it has deed restrictions. Oh, it does. I was going to ask about but that. Mm -hmm. They're bored. It's at the mercy of the board. Mm -hmm. I see. And so, we're looking at a long-term agreement with an easement on this oh, no. to protect the last kind of holding over here. Which is the 2,000 acres? What's that? The the which is, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So you would use your LWCF to purchase the easement, mm -hmm. and then that would be an easement in perpetuity. That's mm -hmm. exactly okay. right. Okay. And I talked to them about other options, but, you know, their concern with anything other than a lease or an easement is that the title they're, they're worried that if they sold this piece, that it would give the message to the world that Brook Green for sale, and it's, you know, it never was intended to be sold, even though it would be for a good cause. So they, they're very sensitive about doing something other than that. They That's like sure. the idea of the easement. The easement, right. So they'll keep the deed, but actually yeah. you get what you need yeah. from it. We, yeah. We would be protected the mental right. interest in the property, the Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Property. Property, right. 
So now when we were back at the beginning, back at the visitor center, and we were looking at all those King's grants and so on, and you mentioned that the residents over there, they had been granted their land, they didn't buy their land. They bought it. They bought it. They did so, so they did buy it. So they bought it when, in the 1800s? Uh, or after that? In the 1700s. 1700s. Was, yes, right after the war, Prince Washington, who was what they called the driver over here, right. had a little more money than all the rest of the okay. slaves. Okay, yeah. He bought 200 acres. He oh. was really in the good with the landowners. All right. So he bought 200 acres of the money he had saved. Okay. And then he turned around and, and deeded then it deeded out, it and out so to different folks. Just about all of us got a pretty good deed. A little bit of it's tied up in the state. They okay. Pretty good shape. All right. And I, I read where he grew rice. They grew rice for some time after yeah. you know, the rice culture had died down. Yeah, they grew it right on up to the 60s. Mm -hmm. And this sense. on the left is a, a wildfire we had mm. about seven, seven years ago, I believe it was. Really? Seven years? Yeah. yeah. And I'll show you what happened right up here. It burned. Wow. It burned, yeah, it looks it totally hurt, different. It burned like 40 acres. It burned more than that. More than that. It really. Just to give you an idea of what a wildfire if it can do to the other, what yeah. it would look like. But you see the long leaves starting to pop back up in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, uh, yeah. This, next time we burn it, we want to burn it and get rid of some of these turkey oaks. Out of here, okay. We've tried to burn it last year, but there wasn't quite enough fuel in it. Oh. But this is a good example right here of the difference in a control burn and a wildfire. And a wildfire. This was our, our fire line right here. Right. We had control burned this. Here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And two weeks after we got through burning, we had a, just a freak wind come, like 35, oh, 45 wow. hour wind, mm -hmm. and it picked up a spark somewhere. And tiered it in there. Over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the wind was going this way to start with, but then the wind shifted right back. Thank oh, goodness. Oh, yeah. And blew it right keep back going. into where we'd already Where you already burned. were burned. Okay. And if it hadn't been for that, I mean, it would have just out. kept on going. Mm -hmm. That's sure. But by the fact that it was control burned, then when it jumped back in this way, then it didn't do any damage. It was all right. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. That shows you. That's the reason about it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so, yeah, you can see it. It's immediately yeah. visible. Mm hmm. We got a lot of help from U.S. Fish on it, thank goodness. Oh, I get it. <laughs> you got a friend for life, it sounds like. <laughs> Everybody, we right? We a bad There fix. was fires burning in Myrtle Beach. It was bad. Are you serious? Yeah. They, they lost like, what, 80 houses over at Myrtle yeah. Beach? Oh, you're kidding. So we couldn't get any help. Right from there. Exactly. What year was that? That they was had to kind of stretch a little bit. 2005. So a whole lot of stuff yeah, happened in 2005. Really oh, that wow. was terrible. Mm. Yeah. That was the year of Katrina, too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Really? A whole lot of stuff happened in 2005. The most amazing thing was that the Forestry Commission... Could you stop just a second? You want to get a picture? Stop, 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 stop for a minute. Oh you want to get gosh, a picture? It was just gorgeous back there. Could you just back up one What'd second? What would you see? Back up. Gorgeous habitat that you've seen a hundred times. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's not phasing him in the least. Look at that. <laughs> can you, yeah, can you also back up just a little bit more? Just a little bit more? I'm sorry, just to delay us. That is stunning. A lot of these Look trees are over a hundred years old. Even oh, yeah. yeah. Well, all all these trees you got are it. probably okay. 120 years old. Could you unlock my window? In sure. The I'll try. Let me see which one it is. There it is. There we go. Thank you so much. Yep. Mm -hmm. The um, Forestry Commission showed up to barge a dozer over here, but their barge was too big. The dozer was too big, and we had a little hand me down from Carolina Sandhills that fit the barge. And so. Uh, we were the only ones that could get a dozer over here. But see how you can actually see the dirt from the fuel now? See how the fuel is really cut down? Thank you. That's great. Uh, well, I'm hold the camera a little bit. Hmm? Let me hold the camera a little bit. Look how the wild lupin came up in it. That green plant. It just came up everywhere after that. Everywhere. Fire for some reason. Berman told me a story. They were over here with hand crews trying to fight the wildfire. And the dozer came over the hill. Oh, okay. And, uh, remember the guy's name. He's an equipment operator at Carolina Sand Hills. He was running it. And um, he came right over and pulled the fire lane right through the edge of it and stopped it from going any further. Oh mm. my goodness. Wow. Mm.
But the further you go north, the prettier the long way gets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So which way are we heading now? We're going back where we came on. We'll turn back yeah. the other way in just a minute. You get just rolling hill the whole island. The whole island's well, look like that. The depth there over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's all I've noticed. Quite a bit of terrain there. Big high sand ridge. Now, do these um, community owners pay taxes? Uh, well, the the state that the state bought the piece that TNC manages, so it's I'm guessing off the tax rolls now. I'm not sure. Mm. But like the folks on the the Gullah Geechee's oh, yeah, that are on yeah. here, they pay taxes. Yeah, everybody else does. They pay taxes. The, mm -hmm. <laughs> the prettiest part of the island it doesn't have a road on it, but on each edge, like a half a quarter of a mile to our left. Right. It's live oak trees and hickory trees right down there. Oh, edge. really? A more water. Okay. Go look in the marsh area. Wow. That's the prettiest part, but you'd have to walk out walk there. Walk out there. Mile to see it. Okay. Both sides, like seven miles of light. Oh, it's like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're into hiking, you could hike there hike just to see the prettiest. It'd be wide open, no understory like this. Oh, okay. Really live oak trees mm -hmm. and hickory wow. trees. Wow. Pretty beautiful. Mm hmm. And we burned this on the left like four times, and on the right just twice. Oh, okay. And you have tours out here, interpretive tours? We, yes and no. By that I mean we do not have any organized, but we use it for fundraising sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And we do have a little trailer we pull like 20 people on, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's strictly for fundraising type thing. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Now we bring a lot of students over here, not a lot, you know, six or eight times a year. Okay. We bring students, but no. Not a big, big tours. group. Uh -huh. The operation that Chris has been doing has been bringing groups to the trails. TNC has been in mm -hmm. on the north end and the south end. Mm -hmm. Does TNC have any yeah. facilities here? Uh, they have a, a, a cabin on the north end that their fire crew uses for staying over here and burning. Okay. And then DOT basically gave a shed which we keep our vehicles over there. It's kind of a we're getting ready to bring some, I'm going to call them wayward boys. I don't know what the correct name is over here a few times. Uh, no, oh, okay, uh, yeah. So they can see. Can Hopefully inspire them. Open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're going to start in two weeks. Oh, okay. Berman, you have organized hunts over here too? We do not. No hunts? No. Oh, well, yeah, we do. We have uh, two months with bow and arrow. Okay. Oh, October, bow and arrow? October, oh, okay, November. no shot. We in it now. Oh, okay. And we limit it to 30, 30 people. Oh, it's a quota That's a draw hunt. type oh, hunt. Okay. I see. Now, do where you do they uh, come in? They mostly put in. Uh, most of them on the north end of the island it had a pretty, well, I think y'all rode by it coming. Mm -hmm. I think I saw one launch. Bottomland yes. hardwoods you can land. Do you have wild turkeys over there? A lot. A lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you do any work deer, with deer? Did, yeah. A lot of bobcats. Bobcats. Mm -hmm. A lot of fox and bears. Oh, and fox squirrels. Oh, okay. Do you all work with Yorkie Plantation too? We, yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah, we, uh, we're good friends with all of them. Sometimes they help us with something, sometimes we help them. Back and forth. Mm -hmm. We spoke, it was something they put on the other night. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I went over there years ago. Mm -hmm. Mosquitoes are man sized over there. Mm -hmm. when I went. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. I mean, we were in the van and they were just swarming outside the window as if to tantalize us. Like, please put the window down. Come on, why don't you? You, you know, when I bring people over here on a tour, they first thing they say, I got to have bug spray. I've never been bitten no. by a mosquito over here over in the daytime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wow. amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Dark is a different story. Dark is different, yeah. You never see a mosquito. Yeah. I guess it's so sandy. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe it's because of the sand here, right? And in the ridge, you get a little more breeze up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I started work over here 16 years ago, there was zero bears over here. Nobody ever even seen a bear, but now we probably have, I'd say 15, 18 bears. Oh, 15, bears. 18 bears, really? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of bears in this island. A lot of bears yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Now, where do they live? Strictly in bays. We got a lot of bays. A lot over of bays. I'll okay. show you some a little while. Like right. this, you don't ever see them. You wouldn't Thick see them. Bay. Right. Okay. Then you'll see them. Sometimes. I can put a camera up any night and catch. Really? Get one on the camera. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any night. Mm-hmm. 
Right, but I've learned where to hang out. Where to hang out now. Yeah. On that oh no. Okay, wait. I can't get the picture of the chew. <laughs> I ain't quite. That's kind of high up there. Get the shot of the chewed up. Holy. Oh, yeah. That's funny. Y'all got a bear over there that's like 12 feet tall. I think he's climbing the pole. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you got them all the way going up. Some of the poles over here they had to replace because the bear had scraped them so much. Yeah, that's what he was telling me earlier. Yeah. So now we see you didn't make that up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Mm. You look at the bottom and see it's kind of a hole down at the bottom. Yeah. That's wild hogs. They like to get in there and rub Yeah, and, and that's that lit. Yeah, and rub. And I see. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, it does. That's our self treatment. See, okay. I think it is as a bay back over to our left. See that bay? That's the kind of habitat. That's the kind of habitat the they're like. in. Oh, okay. They'll actually get in there and it's so thick that a person could not walk, but they'll, they'll make little tunnels all through it. All their through teeth. it. Oh. Uh, you can actually get on your knees and just like a maze. And go in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Craig's so, the only person I know that's got on his knees. I was going to ask. So, Craig, that's how come you yeah. replicated that back at the visitor center? I wouldn't think that'd be very safe. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you so met up with like one of them. Little trail to fall off. Right. When's the last time you've done that, Craig? I was walking my grandson over here a while back, and I, we walked up on a, a, a sow bear with two little cubs. Oh, you did? I didn't like that too much. Uh, she stood I don't up. think she liked it either. She looked at us and right. gritted her teeth a little bit. Right, and you were all bad. And walk on, she off, walked off. Oh, okay. Yeah, been, uh, yeah been not a good thing. Now, what's that herb that you have over here? What herb? Is it rosemary or? Rose, wild, rosemary. wild rosemary. Oh, so you do have some herbs there. It's not an endangered plant yet, but it's getting pretty scarce. Yeah. It only like it only likes sandy places, unfortunately. Well, yeah. Where most of your developers. Yeah. Develop. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, interesting. So, what other herbs are here? Any? I, I'm not. I really don't know. I no, couldn't really tell you myself mm -hmm. with an authority on it. Mm -hmm. But they've got every plant over here pretty well documented. We've had. Oh, okay. Next to do that. Over, I, I, you can look Botanists it up and so on. It is on there. On here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pretty much every animal, every tree, tree every herb. Every okay. Uh, everything's been inventoried pretty much. Nice. Well. Mm -hmm. So now the people who live here, I mean, we only met, we met three so far, and they're in business, so to speak, right here on the island. Uh -huh. What about everybody else? I mean, there's 70 people. About how many are children and then with the it's adults? Ten, it's ten children. Oh, only ten children. Yeah. So with the 60 adults, 60 adults. Uh, so what does everybody else do? They go over to the mainland to work too? Everybody or? works on the mainland. Okay. Everybody works on the island. On the island. Beside the three people we met, yeah. basically. So okay. That's where a big buck's been scraping a tree right there, cleaning his antlers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Summertime, they grow velvet on them, you know. I heard, they, yeah. They that velvet <laughs> the, oh, that's what they do. Yeah. So they rub against the tree to get no, that off. No. I wondered how it would come off. I just wondered if it just did you it naturally. I'd love to see that. They yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. Are you trapping for the hogs, Furman? Yeah, we still got. We don't have near the problem we did. Thanks or unthanks to coyotes. When the coyotes showed up oh, over there, really? they just eating them. about wiped out the wow. Oh, that's interesting. Really? So now they're they're getting about yeah, out, yeah. out of hand. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So you you see any, if you see any coyotes scat, you look, it'll have pig hair in it. Yeah, it? Oh, mm. But we're talking yeah, about right? possibly hiring a professional guy to come over for about two weeks, kind of give us a little better at it. We or know it's we can deal with pretty them. bad. Yeah. By the same token, just how bad is it? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, right. They really got rid of the hogs. I mean, it cleaned them out. Wow. So do the hunters get to take hogs when they're hunting? They can. Their yeah, they can. But And they used to get a lot of them, you know, but they don't anymore because of the coyotes. Coyotes yeah. got them. And the coyotes, really they don't get many coyotes, but they're pretty sharp. Okay. And you have foxes here, too? Yeah. Okay. So what are the foxes eating? The coyotes eat up coyotes eating all eat the hogs, they'll eat, and they'll eat anything. They'll eat, they like yeah. to dig up plants. And, and all that, okay, so the foxes eat all that stuff. So Furman, your house, you own your house here on the island. Yes. Yeah, and you live here all the time. Right? I don't live on the island. I got a place on the island, but I don't live there. I live really on the PD River, which is about two miles away. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought you lived here. I like to. <laughs> <laughs> 
This road we on now is what we call I-95. It runs all the oh, way from the okay. very south end all the way to the north, north end. end. Okay. Perfectly north and south. And the people that had it before we got it, they had stolen some I-95 signs and had them. Had them on it? So we, <laughs> oh, y'all took the them name, away? The name stuck. Stuck. Mm -hmm. All right. Why? But y'all took the signs down? Oh, they came down, down. now. You we, took them we, down. You know, we, we named the, uh, the roads now, but we still call it I-95. 95. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the rest of them, we try to use some traditional name. Name, I got you. This one. There's a so is this the woodpeckers right here? Oh, okay. So now is this the midway point of the island or no? Uh, we're a little closer to the south, about a quarter. Quarter from the south. Yeah. Okay. That woodpecker tree has been there ever since I've been over here, and it's a real good nest That's tree too. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Woody and family live here. So you'd like to stay here, huh? Ma'am. You'd like to stay here, huh? I really would. I come by there every day and piddle around. Uh-huh. <laughs> so how long have you been working over there? Sixteen years. Oh, sixteen years. Mm -hmm. What did you do before that? I was in the boat business for 26 oh, really? years. Oh, okay. That's how you met a lot of the residents, wasn't it? Yep. Mm-hmm. My daddy owned a little place on the south end of the island, and I, I knew a little bit about the island. When they bought it, they didn't know anything about, about it, it, how to get around. Wow. So they got me temporary to, to help them help. volunteer, and then first thing you know, they paid me $2, and then they paid me $10. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you finally we made it to legal down. minimum wage now, you think? <laughs> <laughs> best, best. On the south end, in fact, mm -hmm. we're going there right now, is a, a beautiful beach. Oh. And in the summertime, we might on a, on a busy weekend. We yeah. have a thousand people there. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Oh, because everybody coming in by their boats. boats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not that big of area, but they like to anchor out. Yeah, and just party come down. on and party there. Mm -hmm. Do people bring kayaks over here too? Uh, oh yeah, they do. There's several kayak companies around. And they yeah. Come over here. Oh, okay. These are turkey oaks right here, all this area. All right these, here. right? And the reason you see you're starting to get in nothing but them now, mm -hmm. we're on the very southern end of the island. Mm -hmm. The eight plant rice plantations, I'll tell you, right over yes. here, all eight of them are on the south end. Oh, right okay, here. they're all on the all same end. Here. Okay. They would cut all the pine trees down, we think, to build a house in the and boats so and everything on. out. Yeah. And then they had a fence across the island back here, and they had all oxen and they used to work, work the oh, rice field. Oh, okay, that makes sense. would love those longleaf pine seedlings. Oh, so oh, they really? eat it. And okay. Eat they keep and eating those. They soon outgrew them. Right. Like those too much. Yeah. They were tough. Right. And uh, it kind of shaded them all. Shaded it. Ah, okay. But it's only like probably 50 acres like that, so since it's kind of part of history, we don't try yeah. to regenerate. I this see. This is what we call a Gila port. Uh -huh. got one at each end of the island and if an emergency helicopter comes over here to then, help us fight. Okay, it can land here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Land right here. Nice. But so now, if you're down to 70 people now, like the Gullah Geechee population that's here, yeah. what was the height of that population at right. any given time? And the highest I've ever known it to be was 200. 200. Okay. And that was probably in the 60s. Okay. Mm -hmm. It kind of went downhill, and then now it's kind of. Coming back so some of these guys bit. have got back out of service. They take oh, a yeah, they're coming home. Charge, you see. Yeah. They've been building nicer houses. And right, and getting right. A more money. Money and, and all know, that. And yeah. Kind of upgrade. Yeah, they, and, yeah, the community. They all claim they would never sell out, you know. That's really. a good thing. And, uh, That's a good take thing. a lot of pride in ownership. In ownership, right? absolutely. And all Everybody over here now is pretty well starting it. In the last two years, I say fixing up and oh, that's taking good. A lot of pride. Mm -hmm. look, that's look, good. Looks pretty impressive. Promising, and that's future. good. Good. They're learning how to get things a little better. Grant here, or grant there. Grant there. Or, I was going to ask or about even that. Taking a little more pride in doing things for themselves. Selves, you know? absolutely. Because now Before when they, they didn't have any way to get rid of the house. trash, they just throw it in the backyard. Oh wow. They, they got a dumpster across the river, so they had to take oh, a leak across the river, good. things like that. You know? Good. I mean, you don't think about. But think they, about, yeah, yeah, but they, yeah. What do you do with an old washing machine if you don't? Right, if you don't have, right, exactly. It's just out there. Throw it, out on throw the street, it outside, yeah, right? Don't pick it up. Yeah, that's interesting. So they have a nonprofit organization now. Uh, with the, because that's the one they're trying to get the grants to, to that they work with. To, yeah. Mm -hmm. We try to get some type of grant for them every now and then. Mm-hmm. 
that we mm -hmm. got the dock for all my help with initiated in it. Oh, okay. So that's how the dock got there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now this the big thing is out here, and that's what Oh, that's what this is. is. We got this is part of the nature trail that we were on. Out Get a picture going around the island. Yeah. Yeah. This came into it back here. We own the nature part of the nature trail. This one, the walking trails we own. Yeah. Hold on a second. Want to get a picture? But is it good for anything? Yeah. Oh, there's the um. No, the deer don't eat it, or I don't know if anything. It's a fungus. Oh, it is a fungus. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks almost like snow on the ground. But I yeah, see y'all yeah. do have little yeah. things. Oh, about a half about. a mile off behind us, straight over, and right over here was mm -hmm. a plantation. Oh, okay. All plantations right close by here. Okay. You know where you see these oak trees? Yeah. The That's where the plantation was close by. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to show you right where one was. Up here. This is a walking trail that we're on now. And okay. They have marked and got little interpreter signs. Yeah, I see signs little interpreter signs. Yeah. That's what I noticed. Okay. Yeah. And it's a beautiful trail around the island. Mm -hmm. How long is this one? Two miles. Two miles. Mm -hmm. That, that red ring right there on it's a ring on that tree I put a piece of tape on. Mm -hmm. That's where they used to tie the old oxen to. Oh. Right here was the plantation right here. Oh, See right that here. Right there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right here, and there was 12 slave houses right in a row right here. Oh, and what happened to them? And see the bricks over there? There was one. Oh, over. right there. Mm -hmm. This was uh, this was Sandy No Plantation. Hold on, I want to get I get a picture. Go on, can you yeah. jump out real quick and get a picture of those? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. And these these houses right oh, here were still here oh, in the uh, 60s. There you go. Mm -hmm. And the, the folks were still living over this still side? Still living in them. Nobody oh, okay. had been run out since the slave days. Right. But the owner that owned the place yeah. had it for hunting. Okay. Uh, and he wouldn't run them out. Right. But every time one of them would leave on their own, he'd tear it down. Oh, so that's what back. happened. So they can't come back. Yeah. And that was the last one. That was there. Right there. Okay. Yeah. So those are the that was the foundation that, for it. Yeah, and it was... 12 of them right here. And you can oh, see how wow. the little mounds were. Yeah. yeah right, right in our road. So they were, yeah. yeah they were. cemeteries right over here. I was going to ask you where the burial area is. Was. Yeah, it's, it's right back there. there. They didn't have a clue where it was. And we only Incredible. like a quarter of a mile from where, from it was. where the houses are, right? Yeah. That's something else. I remember that house very well right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where are those folks end up? I don't know where they ended up. Oh, okay. But I mean, when they left the island, the First thing they did, that tore the house down. So they wouldn't come. Mm. Out. At least he didn't run them out. No, he didn't know. run them out, right? But, uh, Interesting. Probably didn't help them either. No, no. <laughs> but they called these, you know, plantation. There was eight of them. These are really, that's, you know, when you think of a plantation, you think of a majestic house. Uh, yeah, but these not, were work These are, they yeah, were not real. Yeah. And the plantation was referring to the actual planting. That's right. Not mm -hmm. the a big antebellum. That's bone. the point. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. And the fact that you don't own it, you're working for somebody else, so that's really the bottom line, yeah. Mm -hmm. but the rice fields were right back over right to our right, and some okay. just a little ways I was going to ask how far away. They didn't have to walk hardly anywhere. Okay, to do all that work. See on the sign, we're still calling it I-95. Oh, <laughs> That's so cute. That's, oh, we still need a picture of that I-95 sign. I'll that's show you that there, head of the trail right yeah. there. It really makes a pretty walk. For you have and another beach spot up, where it's my This goes right into the beach. Oh, this goes to the and, beach. Uh, yeah, it's always people up here at this beach. So oh. now they got a place they can walk, you know, and send the children home and not worry about them getting lost. Okay. Whatever. Isn't that a pretty sight right Yes, now? it is. It's beautiful. And see, that was all rice fields across the river there. Mm -hmm. All that was, you could actually see in those days all the way several miles that way. So trees were there then. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. But over to our right, but we can't drive over there a little too sandy. Right over there, a beautiful beach right there. I'll show you one on it. We got one on each side. You can come around the end of the island and come over into here. So who's Larry Paul? 
He's a guy that owns this vehicle. Oh, okay. That's his house over there. He's oh, one of our, our best this. donors. Can we uh, look can I jump at this out here? ridge? Might not be the good, best idea. Mm -hmm. That might not be the best yeah, idea. Can I, can I you can jump up. Soft. This was actually man made, okay. this lake over there. I was there. gonna ask you that. The sand, see the top of the hill over yes. there? Yes. The sand went from the top right. of this hill to the top of that sand hill. Okay. Just okay. beyond these trees was marsh. Okay. And they tried to Let's pump this, the we'll they didn't want to develop the island, they wanted to develop that marsh and save their land. So oh. they tried to pump this sand we'll out there. Over to there. And it didn't work, they went bankrupt. Okay. And so it made this yeah. nice freshwater lake? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That outstanding fishing. Yeah. What you catch it? Brim and bass. Okay. Catfish. Mm -hmm. And see there's a catfish again, Kwame. Still catch real catfish. Good Let me hold the camera real quick, Kwame. Hmm? You can get nice ones from here. Oh, get a fish jumping. I mean, right if, if he, he, he was going to drive to Samar. The fish is like the joint is jumping. So he's got to do that. But if he Beautiful wants to wait, shot. But then on a, a warm summer afternoon, this will be jammed full of boats. Oh, uh, boats. Just get out and walk this trail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Send the kids on the trail. Interesting. Oh, and then right there is the dock? There's somebody else. That's, That's a different dock. That's Larry right Paul. He owns like an acre there as well. Oh, okay. Is that part of Sandy Island? All that over there is Sandy Island. Yeah. That's where that house is. That house is. This lake, in the summer, mm. they'll be. But this really? is our brand new trail right here, that we, and we got a kiosk. See the kiosk right over here, pointing to the trail. Okay. The people park the boat right over there. Just as pretty a beach or pretty as so one of the trail. Trail. We're not gonna go all the way down it to a tent. Right. The trail turns and goes out. Goes that way. Mm -hmm. Go through three or four different types of habitats. So it's really oh, okay. Nice walking trail. Mm -hmm. They're in the plaster business, you know. You know pretty, yeah, it's pretty, very pretty nice. nice Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. These graves right here to the left, a couple of them that drowned in that. I was wondering that about that. Mm -hmm. My God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Robinsons. Mm -hmm. This is not only their worship center is kind of a cultural center the, for yeah, food. Yeah, overall community here. center. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful church. It's a really yeah. a, How old is this church? It's not that old. It's, uh, it, it I saw a looking for a marker. I saw a marker somewhere. It must be up against the church. Yeah. Oh, it's right there. Hold on a minute. Where Let me see? jump out. I see it. I forgot. It's not real old. There were two churches. Like like they purchased land. 1925. And this is one of the two? This is the yeah. second. It's only one. But always in the same location? Yeah. So the New Bethel Baptist Church was organized April 9th, 1880 by Reverend P.H. Washington, rebuilt in 1951. Reverend T. Ford, the pastor at that time. The deacons were P.W. Washington, A. Washington, M.T. Tucker, and W.M. Collins. So the Robinsons are there. The Collins are there. Several of the other folks. Let's see. Tucker's back there. So all the names that are part of the original building of the church. And there's the Pyatt's back there as well. And there's, yeah. Wow. Well. The blessed families here. They're going to still spirited and chill up for the laws across the water. They got less of these young men and this young and Sandy. And we have a spirit of these. Well, how are the children to do this year? The Queen quite upon Sandy Island. I did write you with Beulah Pyatt, yeah. Her and her husband Sam got this year shot. His son got the tours, the Sandy Island and things like that. So how the children gonna have to come down here for see the family. Tell them a little bit about the shop, the general store. The general store was opened in 1986 and um, and reopened again in 1990. And with this, we um, 2005, we, add this gift shop onto it and so 
This is the uh, Pike's General Store here on Sandy Island, right at the waterfront. You're all welcome to come in. We have lots of stuff to offer you, snacks, um, gift ideas, and it's, it's, it's just a lot of um, stuff that you can get. Right, and a lot of cultural, traditional yes. items, including the fact of why I don't have no money left today, y'all, <laughs> because I even got this painting here, which was painted by one of the Pyatt's, Yes. All right. Who first also cousin. your first cousin, who also has a book about the people of Sandy Island. Correct. Yes, the, the Gullah people, people of, of Sandy Island. Island. All right. Thomas Pyatt. Yes, and this is the church that's here. So if Hunter Chillin come over here, you got a place for shouting thing to you, understand? But that is the true church with there. I came this far at home with me. I don't shout over to the church over there. So <laughs> y'all turn but join us. And like she said, right here at the waterfront, you can't miss the general store. Because if you dock your boat, you're docking it just about in her door. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so I understand y'all have food and things when groups come over and everything. Right. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Laura Harriet. She does the cooking. Um, this is the Gullah Fest that she does for all of our tours when they come. And anybody who like to eat, whenever you call my son, Romy Pine at Tuesday, Sandy Island, you can look him up on our Facebook. And there, all the information is there where you can schedule a tour. All right. Yeah. So, honey, chillin', you ain't got nothing else for do now but go on on there to Facebook. You know I ain't gonna get you this on Facebook. We can put a page over there for Toward the Sandy Island. And you can find Toward the Sandy Island there. And once you come down to Crick Shore, you can come in the Pia General Store. This year, the Queen quite had fun the body of the Gullah Geechee Nation. And Hunter Chilla know when you did with me, Hunter Gwai know this year, the what going on. What a day, but when you be. Peace and blessing, everybody. Peace. <laughs>just saying we've got to make sure to definitely keep places like this just as pristine as they are. Not the endangered species, the endangered species yeah, no on that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Always done. Yeah, this is, this is beautiful. Oh, so now that's the Prince Washington yeah. School oh, wow. oh, how nice. That's wonderful. That's named for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And he founded the church too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right.